Beam me up, PD peeps. Hey, Power Director peeps. How y'all doing out there? My name is Malik, and I'm back on your screen with more Power Director love. You know, the Power Director love you're looking for from PowerDirectorUniversity.com. Today, I'm going to be doing a tutorial on the Star Trek teleporter effect in Power Director 16. So, let's jump off into the software and make it happen. Here we are in Power Director 16. And I'm going to show you how to create the Star Trek transporter effect. Let me know in the comment section below if you're a Trekkie or if you're a Star Wars lover. Before we get started, I want to remind you to subscribe to Power Director University to see great tips and tricks just like this every Saturday. Let's transport some stuff. In the timeline, I have a clip of the scene with no one in it is this first scene here and then I have a clip of me in the scene now you need these two clips to either transport in or transport out and if you're doing both like I did at the beginning of the video transporting in and out then you'll need another clip of the scene with no one in it I'm just going to show you how to do it so I'm not going to do all three of those pieces because basically it's just doing the same thing twice all right you need to record your footage inside on a tripod because you need as much control as possible over the lighting. So you want to have an environment that the light does not change in. If the lighting changes between scenes, this is not going to work. It's going to look sloppy, nasty, messed up, jacked up, whatever you want to call it. All right. So first thing we need to do is place our timeline, our playhead back at the beginning here. And now we need to choose a transition. So I'm going to go to the transition room. And I'm going to go down here to Alpha. And I'm going to select a transition in a second, but I want to explain a few things real quick. You can use any transition that will not impact the background. If the transition changes the background of the clip and things like that, it's not going to work. Now, not all transitions allow this. So a lot of the ones in the Alpha section allow you to just not change the background when you do the transition and you'll see what i'm talking about because the background is the same in both clips so it doesn't look like the background is changing it just looks like i am changing and you'll see when i add this that it gives you that effect so i'm going to choose this transition it's called frozen i'm going to left click hold down my mouse and i'm going to drag it down to the timeline in between these two clips and now I'm going to change the duration because I want it to be five seconds because the sound of the transporter, the sound effect is about five seconds long. So I'm going to click on duration. I'm going to change this to five and hit enter. And so now that transition is five seconds. And now I'm going to go to modify. I'm going to make sure this is set to cross. You can have it set to overlap or cross. It really doesn't matter. I like it to be set to cross because then I don't have to worry about any movement of the clips moving over one way or the other. So I'm going to leave it set to cross. I'm going to click on this X to close this out. And now I'm going to hover over the transition so I see when it starts and when it ends. The transition actually starts at, let's see here, one second and five frames in. So I'm going to move my playhead over here. It really doesn't matter where I put the playhead, really, to be truthful with you. I'm going to right click on the playhead and I'm going to select add timeline marker. And I'm going to put 0105, one second and five frames and click OK. The reason why I'm adding a timeline marker here is because I want to add my effects here and I want to make sure that my, my sound effect starts here when the transition starts. OK, so if I move my playhead, you'll see the little timeline marker here. So now I'm going to know exactly where to put my lens flare and where exactly to put my sound effects so that it all syncs up. Now, let's just play this back to get a look at what this looks like 
with just the transition. So it's going to start off with the area where it's just the scene, then I'm going to appear on the scene. Beam me up, PD peeps. So there you go. Good little effect there. It's just if you just wanted to do a transport and leave it just like that, it would look kind of cool. But of course, when you add sound to it, it makes it even better. So I'm going to go up here and back to my media room. I'm going to grab this transporter sound effect. Now, this transporter sound effect, if you just search uh, transporter wave on Google, there'll be a bunch of free places you can go get this for free. All kind of places. Um, I'll leave a link to one of them in the description as well. So now I'm going to drag this over to where this timeline marker is that I created. And boom, you'll see a blue line when it hits it. So now, when I play this back now, you should be able to hear the sound of the transporter as I'm appearing on the screen. Beautiful. Now, that was kind of jarring. So what I do want to do is add some fades to the sound so it sounds a little bit better. So I'm going to go back to the transition room. And I'm going to make sure I'm on all content. And then there's some audio fades here. There's constant gain and constant power. I'm going to use constant gain. I'm going to drag it to the beginning and let it go. I'm going to grab another one and drag it to the end and let it go. So now it should fade in and fade out. So let's play it again. It sounded a lot better. I love debt. All right. So now we got the base of this. It looks pretty good, but I want to add some flair, a little bit of light to the game. So in order to add that light, I'm going to add a lens flare. So I'm going to go to the effects room. And I'm going to go down to special. And I'm going to select lens flare. So I'm going to drag this down to the timeline into the effects track. And I'm going to drag it right to where that timeline marker is that I added. Good to go there. So now I'm going to go back up to duration. Change that to five seconds. Hit enter. And now you see that the transition and the lens flare are the same exact duration. And so now I'm going to click on modify. So I'm going to move the playhead to the middle to where I can basically see me coming onto the screen, but I'm not all the way on the screen yet. And I think that's a good position right there. So what I want to do now is I'm going to change the center of the lens flare because right now you can see the lens flare kind of across the screen. I need it to be in the middle of the individual like it's emanating from him and that's where he's coming from. So I'm going to go here to the center position motion. I'm going to click on the position button. I'm going to place my cursor over this little red dot. I'm going to hold down my left mouse and I'm going to drag this down to where I want the center to be, which is right about there. I think it's pretty good. And I'm going to click on OK. And now I'm going to change the light position to put that around the same place where I place the center of the image. So I'm going to click on position under the light position motion option. I'm going to place my left mouse over this little red dot, hold down my left mouse, and I'm going to try to drag this to around the same position where I said the center of the image is, which is somewhere around there. I'm going to click on OK. So that's pretty good. But this lens flare isn't the one that I like the mostest. Okay, so I'm going to click on the lens flare type. And I'm going to choose type 4. And I like that one. There's several lens flares you can choose from. Choose the one that you like best, okay? Alrighty then. 
And so now I got everything pretty much set up where I want. But if I play this now, it's just going to be the lens flare there the whole time. I want the lens flare to appear, get bright, and then disappear as the individual is coming onto the screen. So if I play it now, So what I'm going to do to change that is I'm going to click on keyframe. And then under the light position motion section, the brightness right now is set to 100. My playhead is at the beginning. So I'm going to click on this little keyframe button, or you don't have to. As a matter of fact, let's just do this. Let's do it the easy way. So for where my playhead is, if I change the position, if I change the brightness, it's going to add a keyframe. So I'm going to make this zero and hit enter. And you'll see a little blue keyframe popped up right there. And also you see that the playhead, I'm sorry, the lens flare is gone. So now I'm going to move my playhead to where I think it was at the middle. And I think right there is a good position. I'm going to change the brightness to 150. It's extra bright. And so now you'll see that comes on the screen like that. And then I'm going to move it to move the playhead to where I feel he's all the way on the screen. Just probably right around there. And I'll do another keyframe. I'm going to change the brightness to zero. So now if I play this back, you'll see that the lens flare comes onto the screen and it disappears. So I'm going to hit play. So that looked pretty good, but it's not really blended in as well as I would like it. So I'm going to use the blend option here and add some keyframes for that. And what the blend option does, it just kind of blends the lens flare with the background. So right here where it's really bright like that, I'm going to try to blend it in a little and I'm going to change the blend to 25. And that looks a little bit better to me. And at the beginning, I'm going to move my playhead back to the beginning and make the blend zero. So it won't be blended. It's going to kind of actually go down as he comes onto the screen. And then here where this playhead is, because you can tell I'm at this playhead position because it's blue. I'm going to change the blend to zero. So let's play this back and see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. And so you can drag these keyframes around to change it and make it look how you want it to look. You don't have to leave them exactly where I have them. You can move them around. And then when you're done, you can just close this out. And that's it. Play it back and enjoy. Beam me up, PD peeps. Star Trek Transporter in your face once again, my friends. All right, Power Director Peeps, I want to thank you for watching this video all the way through to the end. It truly means the world to me. And now I want to send a shout out to one of my subscribers, TBB Uncensored. TBB Uncensored makes exercise videos on their YouTube channel. So if you're into exercise, staying fit, and you want to check out some cool little videos, head on over to their channel, check out a couple of those videos. And if you're feeling what they're dealing, make sure that you subscribe. If you're a subscriber to this channel and you want to get a shout out like TBB Uncensored did, head over to the video description and complete a shout out request form. If you have a tutorial you'd like us to make, head over to the video description and complete our tutorial request form. Now that I'm done with all of that, I got a few things I need you to do for me. The thumb. The one that's pointed in the upward direction, click on it. It lets people know that the content in this video is good and that they should watch it too. If you got any comments, questions, you just want to talk or chop it up with your boy, leave those things in the comment section below. And last but not least, smash the subscribe button. After you smash, 
click on the bell. When you do that, you receive notifications every time I upload content to YouTube, and that way you don't miss out on any of the learning and all of the fun. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.